The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to change the fail and air action on a standard spring Valtec VL actuator. Air action refers to how the positioner is tubed to the actuator, and fail action refers to the location of the internal spring inside the actuator. Since the spring must be changed to the opposite side of the piston internally, the actuator needs to be removed from the valve and disassembled. Regardless of the configuration, the adjusting screw at the top of the actuator must be removed before the actuator is disassembled. This first step is very important because failure to remove the adjusting screw could cause a severe injury as the spring is under compression. After the adjusting screw is removed, it is safe to remove the cylinder retaining ring found on the underside of the actuator. Insert a flat screwdriver into the notch on the end of the retaining ring. Pry the retaining ring up and work it out of the groove all the way around the cylinder. Lay the actuator on its side. Move the yoke up and down while pulling the yoke, piston assembly, spring, and spring button out of the cylinder. To change the fail action, the components of the piston assembly must be disassembled and reassembled appropriately. Remove the piston assembly from the yoke. Lightly clamp on the flats of the stem. Remove the lock nut. Spacer, piston, and stem O-ring. For fail closed configurations, install a new stem O-ring. Install the piston with the counter bore facing down. Install the spacer. Apply anti-seize compound to the threads of the stem and install the lock nut. Tighten sufficiently so that the piston cannot spin. For fail open configuration, install the spacer. Install a new stem O-ring. Install the piston with the counter bore facing down. Install the spring button with the dished side facing up. Apply anti-seize compound to the threads of the stem and install the lock nut. Tighten sufficiently so that the piston cannot spin. It is recommended that the old grease be wiped out of the cylinder and that the internal surface be inspected for damage. If damage is noticed, the cylinder should be replaced. It is also recommended that all soft goods be replaced and lubricated with Dow 55 Molly Coat grease when reassembling the actuator. Apply a thin coat of Dow 55 Molly Coat grease to the inside of the cylinder and place the cylinder upside down for reassembly. Remove the O-rings from the yoke bushings. Yoke to cylinder seal. And the piston O-ring. Lubricate and install new O-rings. For fail closed configurations, install the spring button and spring into the cylinder and align them with the hole in the center of the cylinder. Align the slit in the actuator stem with the flats on the outside of the cylinder 
Install the piston assembly with it tilted approximately 30 degrees. Gently tilt the piston assembly while watching the O-ring to ensure it does not extrude from the groove in the piston. If the O-ring starts to extrude, use a clean screwdriver to gently push it back into the groove. Tilt the piston assembly until it is centered inside the cylinder. For fail open configuration, align the slit of the actuator stem in line with the flats on the outside of the cylinder and then install the piston assembly. While keeping the piston assembly centered inside the cylinder, push it in as far as possible. Next, install the spring and center it around the actuator stem. Prior to installing the yoke, Determine the orientation of the air ports. Typically, the standard actuator will have the air ports in the yoke and cylinder lined up on the same side. Install the yoke so that the actuator stem goes up through the yoke bushings. Push the yoke down evenly so that the yoke O-ring seats properly in the cylinder and the groove for the retaining ring is completely exposed. Before installing the cylinder retaining ring, make sure that there is a slight offset at the opening. This will make the ring easier to install. Install the cylinder retaining ring with the opening on the opposite side of the air supply port in the yoke. This will allow better access to the retaining ring for future disassembly. Install the end that does not have the notch first. Pull on the notched end to reduce the diameter while forcing it down into the groove. A flat screwdriver can be used to pry the ring into the groove. Ensure that it is fully engaged all the way around the cylinder. For failed close configuration, make sure that the hole in the spring button is lined up with the hole in the cylinder. This does not apply to fail open configurations. Replace the rubber elastomer gasket and apply anti-seize compound to the threads of the cylinder, not the adjusting screw. This will prevent the grease from collecting on top of the cylinder, which can cause the gasket to squeeze out of place. Install the adjusting screw and tighten until the gasket is compressed sufficiently to seal. Stroke the actuator to ensure that the fail action and air action are functioning as expected. 